I wanted to take a second to um, post a video instead of just a, a whole lot of text explaining this theorem. Uh, I thought video might be a, a better way to approach this to give you a little bit of explanation behind the orthogonal decomposition theorem because we, we are in a uh, heavy theoretical space here, uh, not so much applied, I realize. Okay, but so let's imagine that we're working in this n-dimensional space, Rn, and W is some uh, subspace of Rn. So one way to picture this is uh, if we're working in R3, so we're working in the three-dimensional space, W might be a plane that lies in that uh, three-dimensional space. So one thing, one way to picture this is picture W as just a plane uh, lying, lying in front of you, like maybe the surface of, of the desk that you're working at now uh, lies in your the three-dimensional space that, that you're in. Um, w is just any vector in Rn. So, ah, I'm sorry, y. Let me get my components right here. Y is any vector in Rn. So y is just some vector in this three-dimensional space. Most likely, it does not lie in W. Um, so if we just pick, plucked a random vector out of the air, you know, most, most likely it doesn't just lie directly on, on the desk in front of you. So just draw a vector y like this. Um, what the orthogonal decomposition theorem says is we can decompose any vector y into a sum of two vectors, where one of them is this vector uh, y hat, or y with a little caret on top. And it's expressed down here as a linear combination of um, components of this orthogonal basis. I guess maybe I shouldn't get too much into that. Let me go to this first. So um, this y hat it is some vector in W. And uh, for what I've drawn here, that vector might look like this. So, and I'm going to write it instead of, well, yeah, let me write it the same way it's in your theorem. So y with the little hat on top. Uh, and then a vector z that is in w perp, or um, it, it's perpendicular to w. So it would look something like, oops, like this. So this is the vector z. And so this vector y is equal to the sum of um, the vector y hat that lies in w plus a vector that's orthogonal to w. And so orthogonal decomposition theorem, basically that's what it's saying, is we can take any vector in the three-dimensional space and write it as the sum of a vector in the plane plus a vector that's orthogonal to the plane. So again, if you're picturing just this random vector floating in space in front of you, uh, you can write that as the sum of a vector that lies um, along this infinite plane that includes your desk. So you have to imagine that if you extend that flat um, plane, you know, infinitely in every direction. But so we've got a vector that's kind of lies along your desk plus a vector that's perpendicular. Um, this, this fact here is just telling us how we can uh, actually come up with this vector y hat. Uh, the theorem goes on to give you a formula uh, that, let, that allows you to write um, this vector as a linear combination of uh, the vectors in this orthogonal basis. So we have a formula for actually finding the y hat uh, that this theorem provides. And then you could find the um, orthogonal component here by just taking the vector you started with minus um, the vector that you just found. And then the leftover piece is going to be this orthogonal piece here. Um, one last thing. So we call the vector, uh, I keep saying y hat, it feels a little silly, but uh, we call that the orthogonal projection of y onto w because if you imagine uh, you shine a flashlight, let's say, directly over w, so up here, down towards the plane that I'm calling w here, the shadow that w would cast in that plane, that's this vector um, y hat. So that's why we call it, you, you can imagine, think of it as a, a projection in that sense, where if you shine a light above w, the shadow that it casts in this subspace W is um, this vector here.